Dragon Dragoon, or Drekengard as it's known here in the West, is getting its third installment. And since the game is no longer coming out in Halloween, and now coming out holidays in Japan, let's just look at some character art here. What trickery do they play at? So here's the main protagonist, Zero. And right off the bat, I already can tell she has some design similarities to Kayame. And I don't know if that's good or bad yet. She also has some similar personality traits. Loud and obnoxious. Does she cuss a lot? I'm not really sure. How can someone with such a big smart brain get hypnotized like a little bitch, huh? Now pull your head out of your goddamn ass and start fucking helping us! She has a lot of white in her design. I'm only bringing that up because during gameplay her dress is probably gonna get very, very dirty with blood. She has a prosthetic arm. Don't know how that's gonna play into anything. And also she has an eye flower. Well that's an interesting design, I haven't really seen that before. I should note that Toriyoko, the creator of the game, had to fight Square Enix to make the main protagonist a female, and he also had to fight them to keep the flower eye. Which further proves the point I'm trying to make that Square Enix is afraid of this franchise. I'm a little on the fence about how she's dressed, because she's supposed to be a marriage between a warrior and a goddess, and I can definitely read goddess from her, but warrior, not so much. Don't get me wrong, it doesn't bother me that much. It is a nice clothes design, but... I mean, other female warriors from Drakengard aren't dressed like this. So... I don't know how that's gonna affect some people. I don't have a big problem with this, but I know someone else will. But her overall design looks more conceptual than practical. And I like the concept very, very much. So sweet. And this wouldn't be a Dragon Dragoon game without the Dragon. Mikhail, the White Dragon. Now in contrast to Zero's rude and obnoxious personality, Mikhail is calm and pacifistic. He's not only a white dragon, he is the whitest of dragons. And keeping with Drakengard tradition, he is easily the best designed thing in this game. We don't know if there's an evolution going on with him, but if he does, it better be metal. And he's a white dragon, and the only time you ever see a white dragon is when they Introduce the Holy Dragons in Drakengard 2. So, is he a Holy Dragon? Probably not. But it's a nice thing to think about. What is this? This will be the first Drakengard game to have a dragon and the rider that have matching color designs. In Drakengard 1, Kaim's trim color was blue, while Angelus was a red dragon. Inuart's entire color scheme was red, and he rode a black dragon. In those games they had contrasting colors and elements that really made you think that they were writing, you know, something otherworldly. But here, it looks like they actually belong together. And now we talk about the goddesses, the characters that Zero and Mikhail are trying to kill throughout this entire thing. Her sisters. One, two, three, four, and five. One has a lot of design similarities to Mana from Drekengard 2. The red eyes for one, which might give some clues to some sort of influence from the Watchers. Also, they have similar hairstyles. Since this is a prequel, it might make you think that are these two related in any sort of way? Is one Mana's and Sere's ancestor? Or is she their mother? No. I like the way her clothes are designed, it's actually more practical, unlike Zero's, which is a bit more flashy, this one is a bit more refined. And I like how they designed the hood, and I know that's a hood because I read the manga. There is a good sense of unity to the black and white and how it's used on the character's clothes and on her armor, on the stockings, on the fur, and everything right there. The weapon that she has is a unique weapon to the Drekengard series because up until now we've only been using spears and swords, so it'll be interesting to see how that works. And I hope we get to handle a weapon like that eventually. It should be noted that in the Drekengard manga, Red Obtained by Death, one has the power to summon a dragon of her own. Which makes you think, do all goddesses in the game have the ability to call forth dragons? Also there's an elf named Nero. And and Nero is just zero, just with a sideways in. 
I don't know what connection that is, I'm just pointing that out. Two has some interesting design choices. Interesting in the fact that I don't exactly know how to react to it. She's supposed to be the goddess of the sand, and there are some qualities of that that shine out. The scarf, the jewelry, the light clothing. Basically is what I'm saying is the upper part of her body screams sand dweller, the lower half screams something else. Would she benefit from genie pants instead of this? Probably. What trickery do they play at? Her color is blue, which also doesn't scream out Sand Dweller, and the flower in her hair is not helping that either. But those issues aside, it is actually a very nice design. And her weapon is a sword. It's an okay sword. Three is supposed to be the forest goddess, and I actually believe that from the design. Her blouse is very whimsically designed, and she has that really woodland charm to her. And I really like the armor that she wears underneath, that's pretty cool. I can honestly say that she's one of my favorite designs from this list. Uh, her weapons are two swords, a shield, and two shears. I'm really, I honestly don't know what those two shears are for. So, I guess we'll figure that out soon enough. Four is the Mountain Goddess. And from her overall design, I can tell that she is indeed a mountain goddess. She's dressed for cold weather and wears the colors that you would expect to be wearing in the mountains. She does have a very basic design. Nothing too special about her, but she is the more western looking of the goddesses. She doesn't seem to be carrying a weapon. The weapon's probably just the gauntlet. And it's a nicely designed gauntlet. Has some jewel textures on it. There really isn't much to say about this goddess. She's just really simplistically designed. Really, that's all you can ask for. Five is the water goddess. And she's in competition with Selena Kyle for the longest cleavage line ever. This is way too much fan service on the first go. There's a lot to like about her design. And there's also a lot to raise some red flags on. But it's best just to leave these opinions left to the community. Her weapons are a small sword and a large cross sword. Like she's fucking Hawkeye. Her overall design doesn't really look like she has anything to do with water. That's not going to stop people from wanting to see her wet, though. So I guess that's it for the goddesses. They're all very well designed and everything, and they have some original ideas. So I guess we can move on to the supporting characters. Wait a tiara flinging second. Let's see those goddesses one more time. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yes. Yes. Oh my god. You. You cheeky bastards. Okay, after that shocking realization, let's uh, move on to the support characters, or the assist, as they were. Dido looks like a character that's supposed to be fangirl bait. Oh, Toru Yoko, you and your anime symbolism. He has a really simple design, but he kind of reminds me of Noe in some regards. I mean, look at his clothes. They look like a combination between Noe's Knights of the Seal uniform and his Renegade uniform. Except, you know, meant to be worn by a 12-year-old. The cod looks like the result of a masturbation session between Von Hohenheim and Stein with lingering eye contact made with whoever Jameson Price is voicing. He looks like the most mature of the group, however, he is a masochist. So... I don't know how that works. Okta is by far the most intriguingly designed of these characters. There's a lot of design choices here I would have not have thought to make. First of all, the shoes. The weapons. The shield. The robe. Does he have a kooky personality? Check. And all the ladies went crazy. So yes, that is all the dudes that Zero is currently bonking. There's also three bits of concept art I want to show you guys here. This first one depicts Zero facing off some sort of horde of undead. And in the background there are glowing flowers, which seems to be a reoccurring theme in the game flowers. This is probably just like a concept from a level in the game in which you fight a whole bunch of monsters. Or maybe the prologue level, who knows. 
This one depicts Zero facing off with some sort of colossi, and in the trailer we saw Zero face off against some golems, so there's a good chance that there's going to be some decent boss fights, or at least decent common enemies. These guys though, I gotta say, they look more WoW inspired. Like one of the programmers just finished playing Hour of Twilight. And this one depicts Zero mounted on top of Mikhail, facing off against some sort of giant spider boss inside of a web barrier. Now, some screenshots have revealed that there is going to be mounted ground combat with the dragon, so that's going to be cool. And here's the capital, and I gotta say, when the sky's not burning red, it actually looks pretty livable. Here's the water area where I guess 5 is supposed to reside. How anybody lives in these types of conditions is beyond me. And these are the mountains where 4 is supposed to be. Hello! And this is some sort of citadel that seems to be somewhere near the capital. And this here is, I guess, the inside. I gotta say, I've been to a lot more weirder church areas. Now, this place looks familiar. All you're good for is to be a prize in the Colosseum! And, here, and this is some sort of jungle area where I guess 3 is supposed to be. And this is the desert area where 2 is supposed to be. And what in God's name is that? Nature does not know such monsters. And here's some samples for the character's full 3D rendering. And that's all the concept art, or at least that's all the concept art I want to talk about. But all in all, it actually looks pretty great. Looks like they're really going all out with this new installment. I hope the game does well enough in Japan that it gets localized here in America. And if it does get localized in America, then here are some things I would suggest.